What's good ninjas? Design Syndrome here. This will be a really fast, really quick, easy to follow tutorial on how to achieve this effect that you're seeing on screen right now. This is from the last week from the design challenge, which was the melancholy ethereal poster. And some of you on the Discord were asking how did I achieve the effect for my piece, which is this dreamy, negative, film burn, light leak, I don't know how to call it. But uh, without further ado, let's just jump into Photoshop and let's get it, shall we? So now we're on Photoshop and this will work on any document, really any image that you have going on. I'm gonna just bring mine into the document. From what I've been trying, this effect works best on portraits that have a really high contrast with the background. So it's easier to, to get this really ethereal feel when you apply the effects all afterwards, but you can try it in any image you want. From my try and error, these are the kind of images that it works best. Now, what we need to do first is gonna duplicate this image. I'm gonna alt drag it on top to make a duplicate. And to the copy, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna invert it. For this, you can go to image adjustments and invert or control I. And to the inversion, we're gonna apply a mask, clicking this button here. And once we're in the mask, we're gonna grab uh, a brush and the brush with color black. Make sure that you have the layer mask selected. We're gonna just paint over some parts of the image. I like to how it looks when you leave it like around the eyes. So you get that contrast on the inversion in the eyes. It gives it this like eerie feeling, you know? And once we have something like this that we like, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab these two layers, pressing shift, we're gonna select both layers and we're gonna again alt drag to the top to make duplicates of both layers and we're just gonna merge them. Merge layers, right? Now we're gonna set the blending mode to overlay and what we're gonna do now is we're gonna create a path blur out of this and for that we're gonna go to filter, blur gallery, then path blur. And on the path blur here, we're just gonna make it fairly aggressive to add a bit of motion to it. Here, increase the speed so we get a better distortion. Once you have something you like, press OK. And now that we have this, we can, with Control T or Transform, we can maybe move it around so we get a bit better of motion within the image like it's sort of fading away, something like that. I like it. And now to really add to this melancholic and ethereal effect and to add some tactile warmth to the image, we're gonna add a, like, a, like a really chunky and, and, and big noise, you know? And for that, we're gonna use an effect that I already taught you how to do in the channel, but if you haven't watched the video, maybe let's just do it over, it's really easy. We're gonna make a new layer and into that new layer, we're gonna go to edit, fill, and we're gonna fill it with 50% gray. And once we have that, let's go to filter, pixelate and pontigize. And in the pontigize, let's just leave it at the, at the minimum. I think it's three for this, for this effect, yes. Once we have something like this, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get rid of the color variation that we have on this noise. And for that, we're gonna go to image adjustments, hue and saturation and just, we're gonna here kill the saturation like so, and set the blending mode to overlay. And as you can see here, the noise, it's a little bit too harsh, right? Film noise doesn't tend to look like this. So what we're gonna do to, now to, to this layer first, we're gonna name it noise, big noise actually. And to this, we're gonna go to filter, blur, and we're gonna add a Gaussian blur, but a really small Gaussian blur, like one point, right? Just a one point, it's gonna be cool. Once we have something like this, starting to look a lot better. Now we're gonna add a gradient map on top of this. Let's just drop it one here. I just used the, from the adjustment layer panels. If you don't have it here, let's go to layer, new adjustment layer, and drop a gradient map here. And from there you can add it, right? And here where you have the gradient map, you can really really start playing with them. This is from my, my gradient map pack. 
and already the black and white ones are really looking really looking cool I really like them and we have all these combinations here but we're gonna make we're gonna make one from scratch so so you get the concept better of we are, what we're trying to do and how to achieve the effect right but these ones all look really cool so let, let's create a gradient map from scratch so let's get rid of, of all these nodes and let's go to for the first one and in the first node it is gonna be or or shadows we actually gonna use a lighter tone so we get that negative like double negative effect on the image so we're gonna go something around this value it's it's okay but i like to give it a bit more color so we're gonna use something a bit more bluish right and now you don't see anything because we only have one node and one value for the entire piece so don't worry let's just grab something like that something around here now let's create another value and this one we're going to give it a, a, a darker tone, right? And let's just grab something around this part. And remember what's cool about gradient maps is that you can come on and off of them and you can come back to them and play around with them and see what kind, other kind of cool effects you can get, right? So now what we're going to do, we're going to create a third one. This one is going to be even a bit more light than the ones that we did to get a bit more, more, more contrast in the piece. And now we're going to start to move to the more to the warmer tones right that's that's a key tip that i can give you is try to play when you're doing lights and shadows try to go from cool to warm or from warm to cool right to to get that difference also in feel between the shadows and the highlights this orange i kind of like and then let's add the highlight and for the highlight let's use something like this and and another cool thing that I can tell you is don't always go for the most vibrant, more uh, burnt out colors because then when you start to apply more effects and more contrast and maybe adjust some curves, you're gonna blow out the image and it's gonna not look quite right. So you, you want to keep it a bit more muted, a bit more natural looking. And remember to move only within this sector of the of the image, right? I'm gonna signal it here. As long as, long as you're within this this bounds, your colors are gonna look a, a lot more natural, right? For then when you blow them up with the effects, you don't overdo it and end up burning your design, right? Which can look cool if you know how to control it and do it properly. But for for as a rule of thumb, I always like to to think of it like this. And play around with it, maybe add like a, a, a little a little green there, a bit of green in the highlight. And look how I'm not going all the way to the white and all the way to the top. I'm just moving around here. Let's play with this orange. And maybe this, this darker one, I can maybe... So I really like this, I'm gonna set up for this. And I'm gonna leave you here the color codes and uh, the position of the gradient map so you can copy it exactly as it is. And now let's move to the next part which you can see the, the effect is really starting to come together now. It's almost finished. We need to add just a, bit, a little bit of bloom to the image to really give it that ethereal look, you know what I mean? So for that, let's just grab from the blur, the, the blur that we did and the three layers, the blur, the negative and the original. And we're gonna just, again, with Alt and click, duplicate them over the, the gradient map. And now we are gonna merge these layers. One thing that we can do is we can go to image, adjustments, hue and saturation, and kill the saturation for this one because we don't, we don't need it, right? And to this, we're gonna make it linear dodge. So it's adding to the image, adding to the values, right? And we're gonna set the fill to 30%, 30% works. And now we're gonna add blur to it. <coughs> My dog there. So with the blur, we're gonna add a fair bit of blur to the image and you can see live how it's applying this sort of bloom effect. 41, I feel it looks cool. And now we're gonna create a layer, adjustment layers and it curves. And we're gonna clip it to the layer of the bloom we just did. Create clipping mask. And in here, we're gonna sort of kill a bit from this image all that it is the mid-tones and the shadows that that it has and so let's bring it down here and a bit up in this part so we bring up those highlights and that's already looking cool for me but now what we can do to to mimic some sort of the the film behavior is to go into the red curves and in the red we're gonna bump it up we're gonna really bump it up and you see we have like that nice halation that that you get from film 
that looks amazing. And then if we go to the to the green, if we make the shadows a bit greener, and we bring it down here, you can really lock in that sort of filmic effect we have on the image, right? So that's almost it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add a fine noise to really close the image and merge it all together really nicely. And that's the same as we did with the, with the chunky noise. We're going to create a new layer, edit, fill it with 50% gray. But this time we're going to go to filter noise, add noise, make it uniform, make it monochromatic. And the amount here, set it to whatever you feel like but I feel like for this part, the better is to keep it really subtle. So we'll, let's just do a 20. And one that's there, let's set it to overlay and bring the fill back to 30%. And that looks crazy actually. Now let's bring another curves layer on top of everything in the image. New adjustment layer. Curves, and now we, get, we add the final contrast and here we can you can play a bit with it to see what other cool finishes you can get something like this I really like I feel it's really subtle but something like this and you can always go back to the gradient map and maybe invert it or try anything else that you have or create another one and see what works best for example this green toxic one I really like how it looks that was it my guys remember to subscribe and click the notify bell button so you don't miss any of the future tutorials coming your way. And if you wish to support the channel further, step by the store, get a texture. You can get this gradient map pack that I use for this tutorial. There's also the free version included in the Shinobi stash. So go get it if you don't already have it. Join the Discord and the community is going crazy learning together. We have the October challenge going on right now. We are making a new piece every day for all the month of October. And then we are resuming the yearly challenge till the next of the year. So yeah, that was it, my guys. See you on the next one. Fuck peace. We should complete.